welcome to Alpha Military TV. Thanks for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now we're back inside the multimedia Alpha Military recording garage today because it's blowing an absolute gale outside. It's horrible. Um, but I'm hoping that I will be able to get down to the range and put a few pellets through this rifle to show you how it shoots. Now, a little while ago, uh, we did a review on the Hat Sand Factor. It was a, a very much a, a, a tactical style rifle, sub 500 pounds, and that review seemed very popular. So we thought we'd come back, look at another Hat Sand uh, a rifle for that's priced less than 500 pounds, and that is the Hat Sand Air Max. Now this is distributed in the UK uh, by Edgar Brothers and I found this uh, for sale online for around about 440, 450 quid which is great value for money, on paper anyway. Um, now it's based on the Hatsan AT44 which is one of Hatsan's older, older rifles um, and it is a, it's a great rifle, must admit, big fan of the AT44. And what I always say is you know, if reliability is the most important thing for you, and I know it's important for everyone, but if it's really the most important thing for you, then go for a rifle that's that has technology, uh, you know, the, the underlying technology has been around for a little while. Because what happens is that, you know, air gun companies, even the biggest brands in the, in the game, are actually quite small companies in the big scheme of things. And they don't have the multi-million pound research and development and testing capabilities that you would get with say, I don't know, a camera company or a washing machine company or whatever. So the reality is unfortunately, that a lot of companies will take a gun uh, to a certain point, ironing out faults as they come across them in the design and development phase, but then they'll release them out to the market and they'll wait to see what comes back from the great unwashed public in terms of problems and then they will engineer those out over a, hopefully a short period of time. Um, now that's, you know, that, that's, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing that's probably what happened with the AT-44. You know, it's a rifle that over time has had any little niggles engineered out of it. And as a result, the platform now is very, very reliable. Other rifles where I can think that that's probably applied to, um, the Air Arms S410, S510, again, a technology that's been out for a while, uh, very, very reliable now. Um, the Daystate Huntsman Regal uh, and Revere, again, a rifle that's been around for a long time, you know, issues ironed out. So if you want a reliable rifle, pick one that has had, th that the underlying technology has been around uh, quite some time for. So, okay, let's talk specifically about this rifle. Now, as I said, this is the Hatsan Air Max. It's a bullpup rifle. Um, it's quite a large bullpup rifle, um, 940 millimeters long. Um, it's quite a chunky monkey as well. It weighs about 4.7 kilos without um, a scope. So with a scope on, you know, you're looking at probably 10 pounds or more in weight, which is not an issue if you're um, obviously shooting it on a bench, but if you're carrying it around to hunt with or something, then you might notice that. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, review the rifle as always from back to front, zoom in on a few of the key features as well. Then we'll go through the whole um, air filling process, the magazine loading process and the magazine, uh, inserting the magazine into the breech as well. Um, and then hopefully, as I said before, get out on the range and show you how it shoots. Right, well, let's talk about this rifle in a little bit of detail then. So at the back, you have this ventilated rubber uh, recoil pad. You know, it's a PCP, so there's not any recoil on it, but it does it does look quite nice and finishes off the butt quite nicely. Um, it's not adjustable. There's no up and down or left and right, which isn't really an issue because um, I found um, that I had good eye alignment in any case. Uh, and this cheek piece, which is like a sort of a soft uh, touch uh, plastic, does have some adjustment in it. You push a button on this side and that raises it up and down. Now, it will move around a little bit, um, which isn't ideal, but you know, in practice, it's not that much of an issue. And as I say, I found that with the, with the, the cheek piece right down, I had great scope alignment anyway. Now, forward of that is the magazine. The magazine takes 10 shots in 177 and 22, uh, and nine shots in uh, 0.25 caliber. And what I'll do is rather than talk about the magazine now, then we'll, we'll film a, a separate little piece on that because 
um, there are two or three bits to kind of fiddle with um, to load the magazine. And anyone who's got an AT44 will be familiar with that. The, the cocking action is a side lever. It's uh, sprung, very gently sprung for the first stage, and then you pull it back a second stage. And that obviously cocks the action and cycles the magazine as well. Now, <clears throat> the stock is, um, is ambidextrous. Um, I don't believe it's possible to swap the side lever over. Um, certainly not, it's not something that you could do yourself, um, but I don't think um, that that is possible on this, unfortunately. But the actual rifle itself, um, the stock itself is ambidextrous. Now, I'll be honest, I've seen more attractive stocks on Hatsan um, Air Maxes uh, and other Hatsans than I have on this one. It's quite a dark wooden colour. Uh, looks like it's, it's, it's been stained as well. Uh, and it's fine, but um, I, I've seen more attractive bits of, of Turkish walnut on Hatsan rifles in the past. Uh, you've got a bit of a cutout here, which is good because it saves a little bit of weight. And as I say, this is quite a, a weighty rifle. And there's a large cutout um, for your hand here. Now, there's no stippling on the rifle at all, um, uh, either on the pistol grip or on the forend, but um, the pistol grip has these finger contours here, which make it very comfortable to hold. Sets you up nicely for the, for the trigger as well. <clears throat> you probably could shoot it in a thumb up position, um, but with your thumb wrapped around is the more comfortable position I would suggest. Now the trigger is Hatsan's Quattro trigger design. Two stage, fully adjustable, and it's a pretty good trigger, I have to say, I quite like it. Um, forward of that, <coughs> moaning section coming up, warning, is the safety catch, which is inside the trigger guard. And that is, it's manual, you can reset it um, just by pushing it forward and back, push it forward to shoot, pull it back uh, to make the rifle safe. Uh, and that will um, activate whenever the rifle is cocked. So each time you cock the rifle and go to shoot, you have to remember to just push that catch forward. Um, and it's quite a, a, an easy thing to do, you know, although it's in the trigger guard, it is convenient to just push forward with your trigger finger before you take a shot. Now, some people are gonna moan about automatic safety catches, and I kind of get that, you know, it is, it takes a mere fraction of a second to pull the trigger, to push that inverted reverse safety catch um, blade uh, forward. Um, and frankly, you know, if if automatic safety catches are good enough on fire arc spring rifles, you know, they're good enough on this as far as I'm concerned and you, you can never have enough safety. The fore end of the rifle <coughs> bulges down again uh, to accommodate this 400cc uh, metal bottle. There's some um, holes underneath here, which again, save a little bit of weight, but more aesthetic than anything else. And as you can see, there's a Picatinny accessory rail underneath here, and a little bit of a, of a kind of a schnabel at the very end of the foregrip, uh, the fore end there, which is quite attractive. And as you can see, the rifle comes with um, quite loud um, sling swivels, front and back. Um, I'd suggest you probably do need a sling for this rifle, given the weight of it, if you're going to be hunting with it. Um, but um, they are a little bit rattly, so just bear that in mind. Um, now, the scope is mounted on a raised uh, Picatinny rail. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure you could also use this with, um, with dovetail rails as well, or dovetail mounts as well, but, you know, I would suggest a set of Picatinny mounts uh, for using on this rifle. Um, and there's plenty of room for you to uh, locate a scope forward or back to get proper eye relief as well. The barrel itself is 585 millimeters long um, and comes to about, about there. Um, and then forward of that, you have this integrated silencer. And although there is a cap on the very end of the muzzle that looks like it should unscrew, um, it doesn't, um, and even if you forced it, you wouldn't be able to screw in an, an additional silencer on the end of it. Um, now, um, the the, rifle, the the barrel is called Hatsan's Quiet Energy um, Barrel, and they will say that with that integrated silencer in place, it reduces the muzzle crack by 
about 50%, presumably compared to an, uh, an un uh, uh, an unmoderated barrel, and and this is this is um, shrouded as well. And I had to say the sort of the, the combination of the shroud and the integrated sensor does do a pretty good job of making this rifle pretty quiet. Now we'll get into the filling process a little bit as well, but just one little kind of niggle for me is that now I've got short fat hands anyway, but the the filler the the filling point is right at the very front of this. Um, this neck here, neck of the bottle. And I should say, you get a 400cc charge of air um, in the bottle, and then there's another 90cc of air um, in this tube. So you get 490cc of air, plenty of shots. Now to fill it, you've got to take out this a little plug in the neck here, and I, I cannot do that with my fingers. So I've had to use a screwdriver just to pull this little plug out so that I can put the uh, the filler probe in now it goes back in with a fri with a friction fit um, I've not noticed it fall out in any kind of way um, so it works pretty well but just something to bear in mind that you might need something just to poke that uh, uh, that plug out whenever you need to fill the rifle okay well I think that's about it uh, for the, the main features of the rifle let's zoom in on a few of those and show them to you in close-up Right, let's show you how to fill up the, the Air Max. Now the fill port uh, is up here right at the front of this cylinder by the neck of the, uh, the air bottle. As I said before, I can't seem to get that um, the, the plug out with my bare hands, so I just have to use a, a screwdriver to push it through and uh, remove that little plug, put that somewhere safe. Then take your, uh, your fill probe, which is supply, put that into the port. Obviously attach your air line to that, make sure it's nice and secure, and then give the rifle a 200 bar fill. A little bit more, a smidgen more. Lead off the airline. Let's remove your probe and then pop that plug back in again. And then the, the gauge to tell you your uh, fill pressure overall is nice and clear and is located at the bottom of the rifle. Loading the magazine on the, uh, on the Air Max is nice and simple. Um, as I said, it takes 10 shots in 177 and 2.2. And it's a rotary magazine. It's very similar to the HW100 magazine. There's no um, springs, there's no face plates or anything like that. It's just a metal disc. Now one side is completely flat, and that is the, the side that faces the front of the gun. And the other side is a little bit more knobbly, for the want of a technical term, uh, and that's the back of the magazine. So to load it, it's simply a case of taking your pellets and pushing them into um, the back of the uh, the magazine nice and simple you can do this sort of one-handed on a flat surface now the 400 cc bottle and the 90 cc tube um, take a 200 bar fill and I've not been able to find any um, 12 foot pound shot statistics or shot count statistics for the Air Max. Um, so what I do is when I get down to the range, I'll put plenty of pellets through it and I will let you know the actual shot count that I can achieve with the rifle um, on the range. So that's it. So that's your magazine loaded. So anyone who's familiar with the AT44 will recognize the whole magazine setup on the, on the Air Max. And it's very straightforward. Um, so to install, insert the magazine, first of all, you have to pull back the cocking side lever. That will set the, the safety catch automatically for you. Then you can see there's like a little tiny little bolt here. 
you need to push that forward and up and that releases the magazine retaining pin and allows you to pull the magazine out nice and easy. Once you've inserted all your pellets into the magazine, put the magazine back into the breech again, pull that little catch down and back, that locks the magazine in again, it resets that retaining pin, and then obviously push forward the side lever. So that was a quick rundown of the Hatsan Air Max. Next uh, stop, we'll take it down the range and put a few pellets through it. Right, well I managed to get out down to the range. I'm back down at Reading Air Target Shooting Club with the Hatsan Air Max. I set a target out at 30 meters, so let's see how it shoots. Right, well let's go and take a look at the target. Right, let's take a look then. Well these have been shot with Air Arms Diablo Field pellets uh, and they're 2.2 calibre, 5.52 size. And 10 shot magazine, there's probably what, six or seven in a hole there, which is uh, about half an inch. Two or three flyers around the edge of it. Now, um, what I would say is I haven't had the benefit of pellet testing with this rifle, so it could well be that some other pellets would, uh, would perform better. And also, I wasn't able to clean the barrel because you need a, uh, a straw or something to poke in the end of the barrel to get the, uh, the pull-through line uh, past the baffles in the silencer, and I didn't have one of those, so I didn't have the benefit of cleaning the barrel either. And I'm sure that would improve the, uh, the grouping as well. Well, there you go. That is the Hatsan Air Max distributed in the UK by Edgar Brothers. Very substantial bullpup, very solid as well. Um, yeah, not a bad budget rifle at all. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button and give us a subscribe as well. It does help us out. And if you'd like more information on the Hatsan Air Max, as well as a whole range of other uh, air gunning topics, check out our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.